Uh, we got a bunch more relationship ones. Uh, okay. But first of all, I want to touch on something to do with anxiety. Uh, for folks who don't know, you've uh, I've you've struggled with anxiety um, most most of your life, all of your life. When did it when uh, did it kick in? First panic attack was January first, two thousand three. New Year's Eve, man. Good start New to Year's the year. Day, New Year's Day. On New Year's Day. Why yeah. did it? Uh, what happened? <clears throat> I was uh, I was seeing Gangs of New York. In the terrible theater. movie. I don't blame you. I like that movie. Nah, I'm like, I think it's pretty good. Yeah. Anything with Daniel Day Lewis is good. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I, uh, you know, I'd always been a, a socially anxious kid and everything, mm. but you know, I never had a panic attack or knew what it was. And, um, I was sitting kind of in the middle of this row, uh, and it's like, it's like a three hour movie. And we were near the end. Like I was into the movie. I liked it. It's like yeah. near the end, like DiCaprio and Daniel day Lewis are fighting in the smoke or whatever. Spoilers. And yeah. <laughs> and I started feeling, uh, just this uh, unexplainable thing. Mm. Um, I, like I dread. It just a wave of dread just kind of washes over you, and my extremities started tingling, and like I felt kind of like lightheaded, and, and I was just scared shitless, and I didn't want to miss the end of the movie, but I had to. I, I had to leave at some point, and I went, and I, I just sat in the bathroom at the movie theater, and I just, I remember I didn't have to go to the bathroom. I was just sitting on the toilet, and with like mm. my head in my hands, just like, what the fuck is going on? I thought I was dying. I mean, yeah. that, that's a common thing you always hear about um, with anxiety is, is yeah, it, it feels like you're dying. And especially if you don't know what it is, because mm. that's the scariest thing in the world. I remember yep. like all night going home and, uh, you know, Googling my symptoms and stuff, which is the worst fucking thing in the world to do anytime <laughs> you have anything, because yes. it always winds up that you have like super cancer or something. <laughs> exactly. Um, so yeah, it, it just scared the shit out of me. And it was, people ask me about this stuff on Twitter and, and, and Tumblr now that mm. I've got one. Um, and it, it is just, it is too long of a story. It, it's, it's a 12 year history with anxiety now. Mm. And that's why, you know, I don't want to sound like a shill here, but like I'm almost done writing a book about it. Mm. Uh, and I'm calling it uh, Anxiety as an Ally. And uh, it, it's basically just how I've managed taking this really terrible, tough thing, like easily the worst thing I've ever had to deal with, um, and somehow wrangled it into this thing that is a driving force for mm. me to get things done and, and to attack things that scare me. Like the more something scares me, the more I want to do it because I don't, I mean, if you don't, let's say you have anxiety uh, and let's say you have a, a panic attack at a grocery store. Yeah. So you, you don't go to grocery store. Yeah, it's like, well, last time I went to the grocery store, I had a panic attack. I can't go there. It's like, oh, wait, I was driving on the highway, and then I had a panic attack there. So I'm not doing that anymore. And if you go down that road, your world just gets smaller and smaller and yeah. smaller, and then you just wind up being agoraphobic. Yes, and you never so, leave the house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so that's why I actively, um, as I started learning more about anxiety and stuff throughout the years, I wanted to go the complete opposite direction. <laughs> You've done it to a, a, a point. Like I remember like <laughs> drinking with you and like, having my mouth open with the pint in front of me when you told me that you've like, because heights was something you were scared of, you've jumped out of like the planes like how many times? Seven. Seven times you've jumped out of a plane. Yeah. In the space of how many years? Uh, First time I did it was 18 and went by myself. The first five times I jumped, I went by myself, oh my which is the scariest fucking thing in the world. Wait, wait, you were strapped to someone else? No. By myself. What the fuck? The, only the last two times I've done it have been tandem. I did a static line for the first five times. Which is when you... Jump out and it, it's like it's like got a, World War Two style. Yeah, it's got like a cord attached to your shoe. Oh my! And you have to grab you have to grab the fucking uh, strut on the wing and shimmy out to the edge <laughs> like you're fucking like Steven Seagal in Executive Decision, <laughs> and you have to let go and then it automatically pulls your chute. But so, you have to guide yourself down. Yeah, so that that's the terrifying thing is you know that if you have a panic attack in that situation, you're fucking dead. Whereas tandem, you do it, you can pass out, shit your pants, and you're gonna land fine <laughs> on the ground. Um, and you do. Because that's the best way of doing it. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's fine. Uh, but like, imagine how fucking terrifying that idea was. Someone that was prone to panic attacks and was terrified of the idea of skydiving. So was the idea of being agoraphobic like just more terrifying? Yeah, like, the idea of my entire life being afraid of everything yeah. and not going after the things I wanted to do and not accomplishing what I wanted to accomplish, to me, was way sadder than... Um, I'm going to do this scary thing and it's going to suck for a little bit, but then I'm yeah. going to feel like a million fucking dollars as soon as my feet are on the ground. I made it. Um, that's always been my approach. Like, you know, uh, speaking in, in public has, has been a long time uh, yeah. thing of mine. And I, you know, just uh, full disclosure, you know, that first panel I did with Giant Bomb at, uh, at PAX, PAX Prime. PAX Prime. I was sitting in the front <clears throat> row and I was like, God, you're being a little bit quiet up yep. there. Yep. I was being extremely quiet. The videos on the site and everything. It's, it's, you know, I'm, I'm quiet. You see me doing this little like eye twitch thing, which I mm. kind of do when, whenever I'm anxious. Um, but I did it and then I felt great afterwards. Were you having like a panic attack? Oh yeah. I was having an, an intense panic attack pretty much the entire time. Wow. Um, to the point to where I did think that I was going to have to get up and leave the room and just kind of explain it via blog post or something later. Yeah. Um, but 
I, I just kind of stayed in my head and I just reminded right. myself of how good it's going to feel when I make it through this. And like, mm. you know, worst case scenarios, I was kind of quiet, you know, um, and you can see me the thing. I'm just constantly looking for water because I like having water to drink when I'm you know, yeah. anxious. Um, but because I did that, uh, and again, I, I never did that. I game informer. There's never crowds I was in front of. It was, mm. it was cameras and microphones, which I eventually got comfortable with. Um, but now I finally conquered this crowd thing and I got done with it and yeah, it was quiet, but whatever. I fucking did it. So how was the, how was the panel last week? It, it, you know what? That That's a perfect example because I was fine. And, and, so like not even a t- little you, bit or, you know, before, you know, a couple hours before we had to go on, you know, I had a little bit of butterflies or whatever. But we, when we I went a, up we had there, a couple of like one or two beers before. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I had that absolute Texas bottle or whatever. And, and that helps as long as you, you know, find the line, you don't yes. want to be incoherent or whatever, Absolutely. but you know, if it helps you take the edge off, then yeah. Um, but no, I didn't have really any anxiety up there. And, and if you watch that one on the site, it's, uh, I think I seem much more comfortable yeah. with that. And I got done with that and it seemed like no problem. And now I've got a, a PAX East one coming up in a month and I'm not dreading it anymore to where if it was Excellent. this boogeyman that I, uh, that I stayed away from for so long it, that its power, uh, as like an agent of fear would just grow and grow. Mm. But if you attack it immediately head on and you conquer it. It's it's just not a thing anymore. Uh, I've got a question here uh, from I'm gonna I'm gonna keep it a little bit anonymous. Um, H, let's say in Ontario. Uh, hey Dan, I'm sure this won't be the only question you get on this topic, but I'm gonna go ahead for it anyway. I have anxiety, and I would never dream of admitting it publicly. And I know that you have anxiety because you have done that. I probably wouldn't even talk about this if it could be potentially aired through a more public means, such as the bombcast. That's a real. It's real. Th- thanks, buddy. Just because we don't get as many viewers. <laughs> I'm only kidding. I'm kidding. I guess my question is: Are you open about it? Uh, are you open about it with everybody? You've mentioned going on dates with girls who I'm assuming have no idea what Giant Bomb is, so they likely wouldn't know about it beforehand. I don't tell anyone that I have anxiety in fear that it'll form the basis of their opinion of me. So do you have? Uh, so do you make an informed decision about the right time to bring it up, or are you always open about it? Um, you know, I'm always open about it, uh, you know, partially because, um, I, I think it's important to be, uh, because in the early years of anxiety, I was so afraid that people would just think I was crazy or whatever. You know, I didn't tell my mom, I didn't tell my dad, mm. I didn't tell you know people I was dating or anything. Um, it's only, you know, in recent years that I've, I've, especially, you know, in the last couple months now that I've been, you know, tweeting a little bit about it and certainly writing the book. Mm. Um, I think it's important to be open about it. Um, cause it, it kind of removes the, uh, Stigma? There, there shouldn't be shame. There shouldn't be stigma about mental illness. It's not anybody doing anything wrong. Um, and, and actually being open about it helps tremendously. You know, I remember like I, I kind of had this policy for the last several years that whenever I would have a new boss or something, I would just find a, a good time to, you know, go into the office and be like, hey, I just had something I wanted to chat about. Mm. I just want to let you know I, I, I have struggled with anxiety. I've got you know anxiety disorders. So if you see me, if we're in a, a meeting or something, and if I just kind of out of nowhere just get up and I need to go out and take a breather or whatever – I just want you to know what that's about, you right. know, and I'm just going to go out there, get a breather, and I'll be back, and I'll be fine. Uh, and just knowing that they know that, it, it kind of takes away the fear of, like, if you haven't told them, like, oh, God, I'm just going to look, they're going to wonder why I just left the room. Like, mm. it, it really kind of lessens that. And dating's a different thing, because, you know, not many first dates are going to have a natural reason to talk about that. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's not like first date, like, all right, where are you from, and do you have any psychological conditions? <laughs> you know, that that doesn't really happen. Yeah. Um. But if there's a natural, the conversation's steering that way, if, if you start talking, you know, like I've dated girls that are social workers or deal with people with, mm. you know, mental illnesses or whatever. And, you know, I, that's a good point to, to bring it up. It's like, oh, yeah, actually, you know, I've really, you know, I'm, I'm very interested in that. You know, I've had anxiety for years. Mm. I mean, you don't let it define you. I mean, it's, it doesn't have to be like this huge conversation or whatever. But, I mean, just throwing it out there or whatever and just making it clear you're not ashamed of it or anything mm. and that, you know, you, you're working on it. Um, if it, When there's a natural point to talk about it, do it. I mean, don't scare someone off by right away saying it, but yeah, yeah, work it in. I mean, if it's, if it's something that affects your life in a big way, then yeah, yeah, say it when you should. It sounds like this individual is probably in the place you were years ago. Oh yeah. As opposed to now where, you know, you've, 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 you've largely conquered it. Obviously yeah, you never yeah. fully conquered these things. You know, it's chronic. Yeah. yeah. Like um, I, I could say the same about uh, my depression. Like I've, right. I have, oh, I don't know, like at least two, maybe three first dates. It's actually come up. Um, oh, yeah. Because the other person has had it as well, uh, or you know, you, again, same thing. You always kind of have it, but you know, you either you're on top of it or, or you're not. Um, yeah, I remember, and like it usually, if if you go on a couple of dates with girls, it usually comes up in some form. Yeah, like I, I would never, like, 
the, the the problem with this sort of stuff is that you should never like you should never hide an aspect of yourself no. aspect from some from of yourself from somebody you should never use it as a as a as a as like a positive thing either but like the thing that i have always had in like being a little bit worried or a little bit of trepidation and talking about like my experiences with mental illness is that actually when you open up like the the other person really appreciates it and it mm-hmm. shows a sort of a confidence that you have and like a trust um that you have with that person as well that i think they really oftentimes that they will warm to and if they don't then you know what it's probably a good filtering system for getting rid of people that you probably shouldn't be dating anyway oh yeah people that like, aren't gonna be able to communicate with you and yeah, yeah and yeah. people who don't like understand that whatever you're yes. dealing with is something that is completely fine and those people do exist i think yeah. there's less and less of them than there is now and the chances are you won't go on a date with somebody who's like that anyway because of just the people you you, you would be attracted to uh, as, as yeah. people as you know not just physically but just as people but like you know if some worst comes to worst if you said it and then you think somebody took it the wrong way well, you know you haven't lost anything no no mm-hmm. you're getting out early and, and like you said i think nowadays i think it's more of a conversation in the public eye like totally. mental illness, which is great because you know uh it, it sucks when no one really understands it i mean i remember when i when i did first tell my dad about it mm-hmm. a long time ago he didn't know anything about it. It wasn't really a part of the public conversation at all. He doesn't have anxiety, and and the answer was just like, "What's the matter? What do you have to worry about? Chill out. What are you doing?" And <laughs> yeah. and like, which and, is the worst? It, it is. Like, and, like, but so many people do that. It's it, not my dad being shitty or anything. And yeah. as the years went on, you know, and and he realized that this was a thing I struggled with and everything. He has understood it more, or at least he's he's not. You know, he's not just like poo pooing it or whatever. Yeah. Like he understands. You know, so. uh yeah, that it's important to to talk about that stuff so people will kind of understand it. And mm-hmm. if someone's going to be a dick about it after you've you know clearly struggled with it for a while or you've been open about it, then yeah, fuck them. And hey, guess what? Like the point that you were saying earlier about jumping out of planes. Yeah. Like if this is your plane, fucking jump out of it because yeah. if once you've got that first one done, the second time you do it'll be easier. The third time yep. you do it, like I now have no problem talking about depression whatsoever. Yeah. Whereas there was a time where I was so deathly afraid of it that I didn't tell my mother about it and it made it get worse so yeah. like talking about this stuff will never ever negatively affect the net benefit it'll always be a benefit yes